Hey guys, Ray from Love you RV. So in a recent video, I went through our off-grid electrical system, solar, power, batteries, all that sort of thing, and gave you a comprehensive view of uh, the state of it right now and how we use it. So now I'm back with another type of video like that that'll show our water and waste systems, fresh water into the camper and waste out. Um, and also how we, we keep the water clean. So let's start with the, the fresh water fill. This is what I do. I go with the truck and get myself a full bladder of water. I have a 60 gallon bladder. Um, just sits in the bed of the truck. Works really well. Haven't had any problems with it. And uh, what I do with that is hook a hose up to it. And I have a little 12 volt pump down here and it pumps about three gallons a minute. It takes around 15 or 20 minutes to, to pump into my tank. I have a 60 gallon fresh tank and it has a gravity fill over there. And then it goes Before through this clear source filter system. It has three filters, a sediment filter and a carbon filter and even a 0.1 micron filter to get rid of uh, nasty bugs and stuff like that that's in the water. So it kind of puts pretty good quality water into my fresh tank. Inside the RV also have another stage for our drinking water. We have a, a AccuView UV LED uh, purifier and also it has a, a pre-staged carbon filter. So by the time it gets to our drinking water, it's uh, pretty clean. So we don't need to buy store-bought water or anything. We can drink right out of the tank. Another way I have of uh, adding water is with just a, a portable jug. It's about a six gallon jug that I always carry around. I always try to keep it full and I carry it in the truck just for emergencies or if I need to top up the tank. Uh, so I can use a what's called a flow tool. It's kind of a siphoner tool. I demoed that one time but I can I can put that jug on on my ladder and use gravity to to add it to the fresh water tank. To get power for this 12 volt pump, I installed a port right here, ran some power out there, and I put in some Anderson power pole quick connector so I can just quickly connect the, the pump up and just let it sit on the bumper. I can also use that same connector wire over here on the bed of the truck. I have another one of those uh, ports that I use for my DC to DC charger, but it's the same one, so I could power the pump off my truck batteries as well. Okay, full tank, and the beauty of this uh, bladder is it folds up and stores in this box. Pretty sweet. I also carry this nifty little tool that can test for the total dissolved solids in water, like all the salts and minerals that might be in your water. Now I don't have a reverse osmosis system and I don't have a water softener. Uh, we're down in the southwest where the water is hard for about four months of the year so it really hasn't been worth it to me to set up either of those yet but with this I can kind of check on the water that I'm putting into the tank. For example here I'm at a lake a reservoir in Utah and maybe they have pretty good snow melt because the water isn't too bad. It's showing me right now 346 48 parts per million and compare that to some water I picked up at Lake Mead at a, at a, a camp campsite there and it's showing me 640 so quite a difference I remember testing the water in Mojave uh, the town of Mojave California and it was up near 900 so there can be quite a very variance in uh, the water as far as uh, the total amount of salts and stuff. So this can be a handy tool if I decide if I really want to uh, put put really really hard water in my tank or not or maybe search for better quality. Another handy gadget I have for uh, filling water is a flow meter so I can tell how many gallons I've put into my tank. It's really handy for filling up my bladder. I'll know how many gallons so I don't overfill it. And uh, I've recently got this one off Amazon. It was a little bit uh, higher end than the one I had before, this rain wave one. It still works, but this one seems to be a little bit uh, more sophisticated. Also has quick connects on each end. 
Another upgrade I did for uh, off-grid was to uh, replace the water pump. Put in a very high quality pump, about $120 pump from a company called US Adventure Gear out of Colorado in the US. And I installed, this is a SureFlow accumulator tank. So between the two of those it's really quieted down my, uh, my water pump and the accumulator tank helps even out the flow. So even on very low uh, turn of the faucet where I'm just getting kind of a dribble out of a tap, it doesn't pulse at all. It stays very steady. That's really helpful when I'm doing the dishes and trying to uh, save water. Also helps with uh, saving water during a shower. You know, I can have a very low flow and it's not pulsing at all. That accumulator tank is keeping it quite an even uh, flow for me. Here's our water purifier, the Acuva UV LED. So any water that goes through that gets sanitized by uh, ultraviolet light. Kill any bugs or things in there that could harm us. Before it goes into that, there's also a, uh, a pre-charge filter, a little carbon filter that improves the taste. And that's located in our bathroom sink for brushing our teeth and then we can get drinking water with it when we want. Comes out, I think, at about two liters a minute or something like that. But the water's good. My wife has very particular tastes with water and she's had no problems with it, using it at all. So that saved money buying uh, store-bought or bottled water. Just an extra, saves an extra hassle of me having to cart that stuff around. Another helpful water-related gadget I have is this uh, portable pressure washer. It runs off of 40 volt batteries. I have a pair of batteries for it. And it basically will suck water out of this jug and then turn it into a pressurized spray. So I find this handy. With one of these jugs I can actually wash the truck if I want to. I could bring in water in my bladder and wash the whole RV. Don't generally wash the RV, it just gets dusty again, but sometimes I'll do the truck. Mainly I use it to, to wash off any mud that might, and dirt that might get onto things before it really gets a chance to stick. So uh, right now I'll give you a, a demo. I'm gonna wash, you can see my hitch there. Here we're in this kind of orange sandy area and a lot of orange, the other day it blew 30, 40 miles an hour wind. So it kind of blew a lot of sand and grit into my, my uh, fifth wheel hitch there, so I'm going to give it a, a pressure wash, get rid of that. Okay, so let's show you dumping the tanks. So I have myself here a Flowjet macerator and there's a short piece of hose coming out from my RV waste output. Have it all set up there, ready to go. I had added a, uh, a gate valve to that and a little bit of a clear thing so I can kind of watch what's going on. And to power it, it needs 12 volts and quite a bit of amperage. So what I've got here is another one of those connectors, power pole connectors. I'm using actually the same connector wire that I used for my water pump. And what I've done for 12 volts here, rather than running wires from the battery, I had a spare um, converter charger here. So I just screwed it up here and wired right into that. So and then I plug it right into here into an AC output. So when I plug that in, that goes live and gives me plenty of uh, amperage for this. This thing can put out 50 amps, so no problem there. It works pretty good actually. And then this thing has its own switch to turn on and off. So then I just have to open this gate and hit the switch. And she'll pump the water through the hose and then in the bed of the truck I have my tote strapped in, I can 
kind of hear it coming in through the port there. Now this thing also can be towed. It's a Rhino, a 36 gallon, and I can also put it on the hitch on the truck, but this is much easier. If I was really close, maybe I would do something like that, but uh, I'm not close at all, so I'm gonna put it in the truck to dump it. And here it's getting to the end of that. I was actually getting to the end of the kitchen tank. I'll switch over and uh, dump the gray. There we go. That dumps surprisingly fast. That thing only takes around maybe five minutes to fill that 36 gallon uh, tote. So now um, what I'm gonna do is I'll take it over and we'll uh, go over to the dump station and I'll show you how I dump it. Usually what I'll do too, I'll leave this thing hooked up, close the valve, that sort of thing, and use it while I'm camped kind of leave it sometimes if it's going to be raining or something I'll, I'll stuff it back in the box but before I, I break camp then what I do is the final run to the dump station I take everything to the dump station and give everything a good rinse and clean before it's going to get put back again this is a 25 foot 3 quarter inch construction grade hose and I have another length of that so I can go up to 50 feet I need 50 feet sometimes if I'm staying in a driveway or something to get to uh, where I need to dump, but usually 25 feet is plenty for me, even if I'm in a campsite like this where I can't get the truck too close. At least I can back it into where I hitch up and it's no problem. So here's my setup for heading over to the dump station. This is my Wastemaster hose that usually lives in that storage box. Makes it very convenient for uh, dumping my tanks. It has a valve on the end. So it really stays hooked up to my uh, RV all the time unless I'm going off, uh, off grid and wanting to use my tote. Then I put that short hose that I showed you. Um, I have these cam lock to bayonet adapters and I got another one for fitting in there. So what I do is I pull this out and I got a an adapter here, an adapter there. I have a little thing to close off that end. This end has a valve. This is like the cam locks you see. And uh, they fit in there to kind of seal that. So what I do is I hook this up to this gate and then this feeds into the hole. I'll give you a demo in action. Then I just open that gate and all the nasty stuff comes out of my, my tote. The other alternative is to use the wheels, um, hook it up to the truck. I have a bar that hooks up to this end, a tow bar, and I can tow it with the truck, but they, they have a five mile an hour max they call for, so it's not really worth it because I have to go actually way across the, the river or the, the lake over there, so it's miles away. That's why I do this. And then if you were gonna dump when you tow it, there's another port here that you can open and then you can grab the other end, tilt it up and dump out of that end. Couple of different ways to do it. Anyway, let's go demo this thing draining.
Well, there you go. That's some of the products and methods I use to uh, help with our off-grid fresh water and waste systems so we can enjoy campsites like this for longer and longer stays and not have to be totally misery with our water usage. Till next time, Ray from loveyourrv.com. Cheers, everyone.